Today on City Line, you saw him win American Idol. Now Ruben Studdard is in Boston. And here on City Line, plus a Wall Street mover and shaker tells us why now is the time you should expect to win. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Later on, American Idol winner Ruben Stutter joins me to talk about why he's in Boston this month. But first, in today's economy, job security and advancement are tough. Wall Street veteran Carla Harris knows how to make work work for you because she succeeded at a time when people of color on Wall Street were few and far between. Now a managing director at Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, Carla shares her success secrets in her new book, Expect to Win, which draws from her 20 years of experience on the street. Hi, Carla. Hi, good morning, Karen. How are you? I'm doing great, and yourself? Well, it is uh, no secret that folks on Wall Street are taking a hit right about now. Tell mm -hmm. us how you managed to win on Wall Street. I'll tell you, I've been on the street for 21 years, and it's been a fascinating career, very dynamic business. You're always learning. And part of the way that I think I've been able to stay there for 20 years is that I've employed some of the pearls that are in Expect to Win, really understanding what you need to do to own your power and to differentiate yourself in a fast-moving, highly competitive environment. Mm. Now, I had a chance to read the book. It's a lot of great advice. And you said you wrote it because people began to come to you to ask for it advice on their careers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In the early days of my career, and I had some of the questions that you, you've read in the book, I found that I was getting very general advice. And I said to myself, when I got very senior, I'm going to make sure that I give people very clear, very detailed oriented advice. This is what you should say. This is exactly when you should go, how you should do it. Uh, and I've had the privilege of being able to speak around the country at corporations, on college campuses, MBA programs, as well as professional conferences. And almost invariably, after after every speech, someone would come up to me and say, do you have a book? Do you have a book? Mm -hmm. Can you give me the sixth pearl again? I didn't get the fifth pearl down. So I started to get the divine message that I needed to put it all in one place and, and do a book. Somebody was speaking to you. Somebody was speaking loudly to me. Uh, now, let me see if I can read this here, because uh, you are quite accomplished. Recently named to Fortune Magazine's list of the 50 most powerful black executives in corporate America and to Fortune's The Most Influential List in 2005, Black Enterprise Magazine's Top 50 African Americans on Wall Street, Essence Magazine's List of the 50 Women Who Are Shaping the World, Ebony's List of 15 Corporate Women at the Top. Wow, you are among a select few. Women of the Year, 2004, by the Harvard University Black Men's Forum. Quite an accomplishment, huh? Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so the hard work has paid off, certainly, for you. Yes, it, and I think it will pay off for everyone, everyone, Karen. I think that if you focus on being the best that you can and bringing your best self to work every day, making sure that you get the basics of your job and then figuring out how to master that, and then employing some of the tools that are in expect, in expect to win, you will do well. Because these are the things that you don't learn in college, mm -hmm. you don't learn in business school, mm -hmm. and in many cases, people don't tell you when you start in the job. Now, you went to Harvard uh, undergrad? I went to Harvard, yes. And, and grad. That's business. correct school and and Harvard is known for uh, teaching uh, in a fabulous way but you say there are some things you don't get at business school what are some of the things that you learned uh, that were not taught at the school? yes some of the most important things that I learned is that perception is the co-pilot to reality how people per will perceive you will directly impact how they deal with you. I learned a lot about leveraging your network, mm -hmm. leveraging your voice, understanding the important relationships that you should have. What's the difference between a mentor and a sponsor? Popular business press talks about you need a mentor, you need a mentor. Everybody says you need a mentor. But they don't really tell you what are the characteristics of a good mentor. What are the characteristics of the, a good mentor? The characteristics of a good mentor is that a mentor should give you tailored advice. Mm -hmm tailored to who you are, 
to your career aspirations, to your personal agenda, and I talk about in Chapter 2, you should be the architect of your own agenda with mm -hmm. respect to your career. A mentor should be someone, more importantly, that you trust. So you can't just look at someone and say, oh, Karen's been in this business for 20 years. Carla's been in this business for 20 years. They have succeeded. I want them to be my mentor. That's a nice aspiration to have, but if they don't really know you and you're not willing, willing to trust them with your career aspirations, then that person should probably be your advisor mm -hmm. and not your mentor. Mm -hmm. But the more important relationship to have is the sponsor and relationship. And what's the difference between the mentor and the sponsor? The difference between the mentor and the sponsor is that the mentor is somebody that you tell the good, the bad, and the ugly to. And as I said before, they give you tailored advice. The sponsor is someone that you tell the good, the good, and the good to. <laughs> they should be aware of, you know, any frailties you might have or any mistakes that you've, you've made. But that's the person that's carrying your paper into the room. Mm -hmm. That's the person that behind closed doors will argue passionately on your behalf why you should get the promotion, why you should get the raise, why you should get the outstanding bonus, or why you should get the next positioning appointment. The, per the sponsor is the person, you make no mistake, that will use their political capital and their social capital on you, and there needs to be a good reason why they're spending that capital on you. You can survive a very long time in your career without a mentor, but you will not move up within an organization without a sponsor. And this kind of advice is particularly important uh, in this economy with people losing their jobs, people wanting to hold on to their jobs. Absolutely. It's even more important that you understand who's carrying your paper into the room. And if you can't answer the question right now, who's going to argue vehemently on my behalf, then you should stop working so hard and go recruit a sponsor. I talk also in that chapter that nirvana is when you walk into an organization and someone says, Karen, I'm going to take you under my wing, and I'm going to make sure that you're successful. And for five years, ten years, they're the person that really charts the course. They support you. They get others. They recruit others to support you. That's nirvana. But for most of us, particularly women and people of color, it generally doesn't happen that way. So sometimes you'll have to go recruit a sponsor. And certainly as a person of color uh, in the 80s, you must have been one of few Very on few. Wall Street. Very few on the street. And you, you have to, as I said, sometimes recruit a sponsor. When I looked around and it was time for me to be promoted to manage a director, and in the, in the, we're in the 90s now, I started looking around at people that I knew was all, that were also up for promotion, and I looked around at people that I knew would be at the decision-making table. Mm. And I started saying, oh, he's going to argue for him. He's going to argue for her. She's going to argue for, for him. And I couldn't, with confidence, say who would be the person standing pounding the table for me. And I said, uh-oh, I'm vulnerable. My, my promotion is vulnerable here. So I went to recruit a sponsor. And, you know, so many uh, career professionals get caught up in work. They live work. They breathe work. But you also say in the book that it's important to have balance. Absolutely. And you have a whole nother life uh, away from Wall Street, gospel mm -hmm. singing. Yes. Uh, and I understand you've performed two sold-out performances at Carnegie Hall. That is correct. And have an album out? Yeah, two. Two? Two CDs, yes. That's amazing. Yes. Where well, do you find the time? Well, I tell you, I'm very aggressive with my calendar. And I think that we do those things that are important to us no matter what. So if they are important to you and having balance is important to me, one of the things that I talk about in that chapter is that people talk about balance and they mean generally family work balance. Mm -hmm. But in many cases, we all would admit that family sometimes can be work as well, depending on where you are in your kid's life or in your family or your parents uh, at that time. And I, I challenge people to think about balance in the sense of those things that bring you joy. Now, they can certainly be family, but they could also be philanthropic efforts. It could be uh, working out. It could be mountain climbing. It could be those things that bring you joy. That is what you should have as a part of your day every day somehow, mm -hmm. even if it's only five or ten minutes of that. And, you know, sometimes I'll go take a voice lesson. Instead of having lunch with someone, I'll go sing for an hour. But it puts the madness kind of in perspective. It puts it all in perspective, particularly if community service is a part of your equation, mm -hmm. because the act of giving back to somebody else fulfills you. It fills you up, and it allows you to go off on your way professionally and do those things that you would normally do with a different spin, if you will. So it is absolutely an essential part of the success equation, in my mind, is to have some of that uh, that brings you joy. Carla Harris, the book is called Expect to Win. Thank you very much and such great advice. Thank you for having me, Karen. Okay. Coming up, American Idol winner Ruben Studdard sings his heart out in a special performance at Boston Strand Theater. Meet him next.